Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Rifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're going to start off by grabbing a few things here at the farmhouse and then we're going to be moving out to the oceans because once again we're going to take a trip out there and find that coral reef that I found in the last episode. Now I'm recording this basically right after the last episode so I have not yet seen the results of the poll that people are telling me what to put on the trident. So we're going to leave the trident here. We're going to use our elytra and rockets again. At least this time, I know exactly where I'm going. So I know I don't need to waste a whole bunch of rockets flying around trying to find the coral reef. I know exactly what the coordinates are. We are headed out there today. And I'm going to bring eight nautilus shells and one of our hearts of the sea because we're going to start off by making ourselves a conduit. Conduits are kind of like beacons in a way, but they have a very specific use that is related to underwater activities. To make one, you need eight Nautilus shells, which you can get from either fighting the drowned or from fishing them up. They are a random kind of treasure item that you can get from fishing. Hearts of the Sea can only be found by following those buried treasure maps that we've discovered in previous episodes. So I'm going to grab the conduit out of here. This is our first conduit. I'm very excited about this. But... Conduits on their own will not do a whole lot. They are actually kind of a nice light source. These conduits actually give off a light level of 15, much like any kind of glowstone block or any other light source would. And much like beacons, they do take a little while to break, so it can feel a little bit nerve-wracking at first, but they can be broken just like beacons can. And to activate them, you need to place them underwater. But that's not all. You need to surround them with a few rings of prismarine. And for that, we are going to run back over to our storage system here and we're going to grab a few blocks of prismarine to bring with us on this journey. Any kind of prismarine will do, provided that it's a full block, and that also includes sea lanterns. So you could potentially use those in the design. I've used all my dark prismarine, or at least I've stored all of my dark prismarine over at the Founder's Forge, so we're not going to worry too much about that. And we don't have much of the regular prismarine, so I guess we're stuck with using prismarine brick. But thankfully, only a stack of this should do. In fact, I don't think we need much more than about 50 blocks. I can't remember the maths off the top of my head, but we will get to that when we actually start the conduit up. The other thing I want to bring with me is a shulker box because we're going to collect up a bunch of the coral, basically as much coral as we can carry. And for that, we're going to need a little bit of portable storage. Now I'm going to empty out this of all of the loot and ender pearls and stuff that we've currently got right now. We're going to save that name tag for a little bit later on. And yeah, I'm going to empty the ender pearls into our mob drops chest here, just so that we've got a little bit of space in this shulker box because yeah, we're going to need a fair amount of it. There are a bunch of different coral blocks that we can acquire. So yeah, I think we'll probably need to uh, to give ourselves some space there. So with an empty shulker box, some prismarine conduit, and we brought some ender pearls with us because I basically ran out of space in the mob drops chest. I could probably condense some of this stuff up, but yeah, we're not going to need this shulker box for too long once we've got enough coral, but we are going to fly out to positive 1700, negative 1700, which is a nice easy set of coordinates to remember. And I think if we head basically in a diagonal line in this direction, we should be able to get it. So let's have a quick run up here and take to the skies. All right, folks, I'm going to travel over there in style and I will see you when we get there. And from the looks of things, we are coming up on it now. Here we are in the coral reef. And this place, thankfully, is pretty large. So we hopefully shouldn't have to dismantle the entire place while we're here. But there will be lots of coral for us to harvest. Before we do any of that, though, I'm actually going to set up the conduit. Because the conduit's purpose is to provide us with extra underwater vision and also water breathing, which is going to be very, very useful for what we're going to do here. So you'll notice I haven't brought any water breathing potions with me. All we need to do is set up a conduit over here. Now the conduit, much like the beacon, requires other blocks in order for it to be active. And in this case, we need to set up a ring of prismarine like so with the conduit in the middle. So this is a, a ring of prismarine with a three by three hole in the middle. So five blocks on each side of this. And then if we put the conduit in the center, we'll need to pop it on there like so, so that we can activate it. There we go. And once that happens, it opens up. You'll see these wonderful particles streaming into it. And you'll notice that our potions HUD has got a little icon up there in the top right hand corner. You'll also notice that my breath meter has stopped depleting. And if I open this and take a look at the potions HUD here, we have this effect called conduit power, which gives you a little bit of water breathing, a little bit of extra underwater vision, and yeah, basically allows you to do a whole bunch more underwater 
than you could before. I'm pretty sure that this is about the minimum number of blocks that you can have surrounding a conduit for it to work, but this is not the maximum amount that you can do for the full effect, because conduits, like beacons, still have a range, and the range depends entirely on how many blocks you have around the outside of it. If we get a little bit further away from this conduit, you will see the effect start to deplete. It's not doing it right now, because obviously the range of this thing is pretty decent for the moment, but yeah, if we look at the... Yes, there we go. We're outside the range of it, about here. So let me take a mental note of this. We'll actually, we'll make a physical note of it. We'll put a prismarine block there. That is roughly the area where our conduit power ran out. Now, if I come over here and add a second ring horizontally, so if we add one that comes out like so to this, if we add another ring there, then that boosts the conduit power effect, which you won't see here. It won't be like conduit power two or anything like that. But now if I swim out as far as that prismarine block that I placed a little while ago, you should probably see that the conduit power will reach and replenish the effect all the way over here. See, it is actually refreshing that now. So even though we were running out of it when we stood on this block before, it has an even greater range than it did, meaning that you can cover a pretty wide underwater area and still get the conduit power from it. But that's not all, because we can now add a third ring just by adding a few extra prismarine blocks to the outside here and surrounding it in this kind of, I guess, almost gyroscope kind of shape. And if we put that around there, this is the maximum amount of blocks we can place around the outside of a conduit. And this activates a third tier of the conduit's powers, which once again does not show up in the potions hard. But let me tell you, if any hostile mobs get within about 10 blocks of the conduit, they will start to take damage from it. It's not a huge radius, but if you put this near a bunch of drowned that are spawning in an underwater ruin, or if you put it inside a guardian temple, anytime they swim up to it, they start to take damage. They don't take damage particularly fast, so it isn't all that useful for farms and stuff like that, but it is absolutely possible to have this thing used as some sort of defense for an underwater base. Not to mention the fact that having underwater breathing and so forth is really helpful. As long as there are no blocks placed within the radius of this kind of three by three by three around the conduit itself, you can actually do what you want building here as well. You can, you can kind of fill the rest of this in if you want to. It really doesn't make a difference after you've surrounded it with enough prismarine. And these rings don't have to be the only design that you can make. You can actually set up a bunch of different designs with prismarine as long as there are the same number of blocks kind of in range of the conduit. So you can make all sorts of designs with this. It's an opportunity to exercise your creativity and we currently have the maximum range of the conduit effect as well. So we can swim out super far and we should still be able to receive the benefits of conduit power. And that's a good thing for us right here because our next task is going to be to travel around here and grab as much of the <laughs> coral as possible and the dolphin's grace effect is certainly going to help us travel a little bit. So as you can see, coral reefs are full of these brightly colored blocks, which will not hurt you if you touch them or anything, unlike coral in real life, which can cause some really nasty stings. And coral has to be harvested with a silk touch pickaxe. So I've got myself a silk touch pickaxe here. We're going to grab as much of this as we can. And of course, this has the usual problem of stuff being harvested underwater where it needs to float to the surface. So a lot of the time you'll find yourself swimming around to gather as much of this stuff as possible. Now growing out from the coral blocks themselves are coral tubes and coral fans. These are just known as regular coral. You have coral blocks, coral, and then coral fans. And each of these also needs a silk touch pickaxe in order to gather it, or at least a silk touch tool. I don't know if the shovel will do that. Yes, it will. Okay, so any kind of silk touch tool can be used to break the coral tubes and coral fans. The blocks themselves will need a silk touch pickaxe. The fourth thing you will find growing on coral reefs is these sea pickles. And sea pickles grow in clusters of up to four, and they are a light source. So if you stand next to this one, you'll notice it's got six block light right now. The more pickles you add to that, it increases by three each time up to a total of 15, which is the same once again as you would get from a conduit or a glowstone block or a redstone lamp or anything that's a large light source like that. Basically anything that's not a torch that gives off light is probably going to give off a light level of 15. Sea pickles will only give off light if they are in water though, so it's kind of better to use them for lighting underwater bases or perhaps kind of having light sources hidden in small blocks of water around your base might be another option as well. But it's usually the kind of thing that you can use to hide light organically and they don't necessarily look like a light source either so if you want to disguise your torches and stuff like that they're actually kind of perfect. I'm going to gather a few of these but we won't worry too much about them right now because as I said we can farm them with bone meal anytime we want. One other thing you will need to be a little bit wary of when you're exploring warm ocean biomes is these guys. 
These are actually live pufferfish, and <laughs> once we get a little closer to them, you will see what I mean. There we go, <laughs> this guy fully inflated. And if you swim up to a pufferfish, they can actually deliver a poison effect much in the same way as if you eat a pufferfish that you fished up out of the ocean. They will still drop themselves if you hit them like that as well, so <laughs> that you can still actually harvest pufferfish that way, or just get rid of them if you don't want to risk swimming into them and poisoning yourself. The poison effect will not last for very long, but it can still be a bit of an annoyance. Much prettier are the schools of tropical fish that you'll find here in coral reefs, and you can always bucket one of those up if you manage to get close to one of them. There we go, we have a bucket of tropical fish, and it will tell you the variety of the fish, and there are a whole bunch of different ones in the game, although at the present, it doesn't show you the color of the fish once you have it in a bucket, so you might have to look up like a, a table of these fish, but it will always give you the same color when you put it back down. And there are even some uh, texture packs and data packs that will allow you to have a sprite that looks basically the same as the fish that you just scooped up, so you can, uh, you can add some variety that way. That's pretty much all I wanted to say about coral reefs right now, but when it comes to the blocks, the coral, and the fans, we're actually going to do a lot more stuff with these in future. So I'm going to collect a whole bunch of supplies while I'm here, and I'll meet you back at the base, and we're going to explore some of the other interesting properties that coral has. One other thing I should quickly cover before we leave, and it requires a little bit of bone meal, so I've just killed a skeleton on this nearby island, and we can grab some bone meal. If you bone meal the floor in a coral reef, or if you bone meal the coral blocks themselves, it will actually grow grow you, plus a bunch of seagrass, but some more of the regular coral or the coral fans. Unfortunately, this will not get you any more coral blocks, and there is no way of crafting them. Like, you can't put two by two of these in a crafting interface and get a coral block out of it. So some people have actually elected to use a data pack that allows you to craft regular coral blocks out of the coral entities because it's kind of nice to have a renewable source of this. Obviously, as far as the game is concerned, you can find a bunch of coral reefs, mine those out, and you will get a bunch of blocks. And it's also kind of a lesson about environmental conservation and how we should protect the world's oceans. But obviously, as far as game mechanics go, it's a fairly limiting one. So people might want to adjust that to suit their own needs if you feel like you're going to be building a lot of stuff with coral blocks, which if you're building an ocean base, you might want to because they're incredibly pretty. So here we are back at Founders Forge with a full shulker box of coral and coral related things. So I'm gonna take out a few of these at a time and we'll go over some of the interesting and unique properties of coral and how we can use them. Specifically, right now, I really wanna look at brain coral because I love the texture of this and I think it's gonna be really useful for what we're doing here. We'll take out some of the other, actually, let's take out some different colors. <laughs> let's make this a little bit more interesting here. Let's take out a couple of the tube coral fans, maybe the fire coral as well, that kind of stuff. And we'll get a bubble coral thrown in there for good measure. So the key thing to remember about coral is that it needs water to survive. It needs water to be touching one of the faces of the block in order to remain the same color, in order to keep its kind of bright and vibrant color, because coral is a living thing. Coral requires water to survive. And if you place coral anywhere outside of water for a long enough period of time, it will end up dying. If after a while, it will revert into a gray colored block and there we go, it dies. And that block is actually no longer able to be turned back into living coral. It is dead and will remain that way in your inventory, like so. Now, for most people, you'd think, oh, that's kind of a shame because that means you don't get the vibrant color. But in this case, it's actually going to be a really interesting thing to mix in with some of the stone that we have around here. Because <laughs> if you add some, like, some dead brain coral into that, it can look a little bit like stone that's maybe been affected by the heat. It has a kind of similar sort of porous structure to things like the magma blocks. Maybe we can use this as a kind of like a scorched earth kind of texture or something like that. The same goes for any of the other types of coral, by the way. So if we end up using, let's say, this extra block of bubble coral, if we put that down there, it's going to do exactly the same thing. After a few seconds, it's going to revert to a dead coral block. The same also applies to these coral entities, the, the regular kind of coral. If you place that on the ground there, it looks nice and vibrant. It looks really cool, but it will die much the same way as the other stuff does. And once again, you'll need a silk touch pickaxe to move it again, and it will return to your inventory as a dead coral item. Exactly the same thing is also true of the fans, as you can see right here. And this means that you want to have some water around. The difficulty here, of course, is that you don't want to just be digging holes to put these things in because that doesn't really look all that great. Like if we put a water bucket down there and we put some tube coral down there, 
you're not really going to see it when you're walking around. It's just going to seem like a, a bit of a waste. But do not worry, all is not lost. There are actually a couple of really neat ways to have coral just kind of show up on the surface. And it might not be super easy to do with grass blocks though because the main thing you want to do is create a slab or some stairs or something like that that can be waterlogged and then you can waterlog this and place the coral on top of it. Coral can be placed pretty much anywhere so if we pop coral on top of this wood block it's now immediately adjacent to this waterlogged slab and you'll notice that even after a little bit of time that coral has remained alive. And that is because the slab down there is waterlogged and is feeding it with water. So when it comes to using it in our build over here, I don't want to do too much of this because I don't want it to look over detailed. But you can imagine some of this stuff, the, the coral fans that are dead and just kind of placed around here, to almost be grass that has burnt down or like patches of ash or something like that to go along quite well with the concrete powder that we're using here and there. As for the straight up coral plants, I don't know if they're going to... They might kind of seem like bushes, I suppose. We could probably do something with that. And then, like I said, the regular coral blocks might be a really good addition to the area around here because obviously right now they're bright pink, which is kind of a cool contrast as well. But once they die, they will just end up blending into the terrain a little bit better. And these things have a slightly different color of gray to this color of gray. They're kind of a little bit warmer. They've got a little bit more of a, a kind of red hue creeping in there. So it doesn't necessarily mix in super well with walls. Like if I put it in the middle of of this stone brick section here you'll see it doesn't quite have the same kind of it's not the same gray as everything else it might still work though it's totally up to us if we want to throw in a couple of details like that here and there but i think especially where the land is supposed to have been damaged by this magma flow then that's gonna that's gonna help a great deal that's gonna really set a nice environment up i also wanted to have this be part of the path here and occasionally throw in some mycelium here and there and that's one of the reasons we've been harvesting so much of the mycelium over here in the swamp is to have that combination paired together there we go a little bit of mycelium around the border and a little bit of this dead coral in there and we can create a really kind of grungy worn down and almost damaged look for the area that's going to be old town I kind of like this as a vibe. I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. We could even use dead brain coral as part of the buildings, as though the stonework has been kind of worn over time and, and is just kind of crumbling and rotten almost. And I don't want to use it too much. I don't want it to just become like all of the stone in this area. But I think, I don't know, that's a pretty good start. We can do a lot with these textures. So it's pretty good that we've found a source of coral and now we know how to use it, then we can implement it in some of these builds and have a really fun time designing some stuff. The other coral textures will also have their uses. Like I've seen a lot of people using the tube coral, this blue one, as kind of barnacles. If you have those up against a seashore and you have like a cliff that you've been terraforming, barnacles with these would look really, really great. Obviously, we don't have any kind of slabs and stairs or any kind of variants like that of coral because that's just not kind of how it works. It's not really meant to be a building block in that way so much as it is meant to be like a, a living coral structure, but we can do a lot with those. I've seen the brain coral and the fire coral used as kind of dead bushes as well. And these actually look really good in snowy biomes to imagine that the bushes that are there have either been kind of covered with snow or that they're just kind of dead for the winter and that their leaves are all kind of fallen off and the plant is waiting for it to become spring again in those kind of winter builds. And oh, we bopped that one, unfortunately. Yes, we do still need to grab them with a silk touch pickaxe. Occasionally I end up forgetting that. But now we have access to these blocks, I can imagine us doing a whole bunch of creative stuff with them. And I reckon it will be put to good use around here as we develop the town of Founders Forge. But that is going to be it for this episode episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see future episodes, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.